thanks for tuning in. Today I'm going to be showing you how to make a dinosaur out of a toilet paper roll. And if you tuned in on Monday, we made our first, but this one's going to be a little different. This is going to be a Triceratops. Um, and it's my favorite out of the two. It's a little bit more in depth. But the items that you'll need for that are obviously going to be your templates, um, which should be online for you to be able to get. I uh, don't have a printer at home, so I kind of had to sketch mine um, just by looking at it on the computer. And how I did that was I just took a copy paper and I took the width of my paper toilet paper roll and then just sketched the outline of it on the inside of that and then cut it out. Um, if you don't have a printer at home, you can always do it that way. <clears throat> that way you can still um, get your template. But uh, so you'll need your template, your paint, or whatever it is you're going to decorate with. Um, if you don't have paint, you can also use um, markers or pencils or crayons. Any of those work just as well. Um, obviously your toilet paper rolls. Um, you can also use paper towel roll. You should be able to get maybe two if not three dinosaurs out of that. And then usually only about one out of a toilet paper roll. You also need a sharpie marker to add some finer details. And then obviously if you're using paint, you need uh, paint brushes. So I've got a zero and a four here. Um, this is gonna be to paint the good portion of the body and then the smaller one to add the finer details. Uh, scissors and then a pencil or a pen to trace your uh, template. So we'll go ahead and get started. Um, so I flattened my toilet paper roll here. We want to crease the sides and I'll show you here. Um, so since I did eyeball my template and I didn't print it out, so it's not exactly to the width of the paper towel roll. Uh, I'm going to kind of impro improvise with it. Um, so I'm going to kind of start in the center roughly and begin tracing. Kind of get in here. And when you trace, if you want to make them a little bigger, you can go a little bit bigger than your actual um, template, which I'm going to do that with the head. But now, since I centered it, I'm going to slide it over to the edge. And you want to make sure that when you're um, tracing, you trace all the way to the edge that way when you go to cut out uh, for when it's the right proportions and then um, we want to make sure that it stays all together. So I'm going to slide it back over to the other edge. Kind of like that. So that's what we're looking for. And if you think um, like the tail looks a little too big to you or um, you know, the, the horns are a little too big. You can always, when you're cutting it out with your scissors, you can always trim that. Now I'm gonna do the head. I'm gonna do the head a little wider. And this is just because I want it to be a little fatter. And then. Kind of like that. So that's what we're looking for. So you can see it's definitely bigger. I think this one just got a little too narrow when I cut it out. Um, so you can make those adjustments as you go. So first we're gonna cut out the body and then the head, because the body needs to be um, all connected, but then we only need obviously one head for the dinosaur. So I'm gonna go ahead and start. You can just be careful with this. The uh, cutting out the rolls, they're a little stiff, so um, we want to make sure we're being careful with that and we don't cut ourselves. And I want to make sure when I cut out the horns here, the antler, or yeah, horns, sorry, um, that they are to a point. So just things like that to keep in mind. And if you see your pen or pencil, whatever it is that you traced with on there, that's totally fine. You're gonna cover that up with paint or markers anyway, so don't worry about that. Just a little bit. So 
just cutting out the feet. And like I said, we wanted to make sure that these sides stay connected. Um, so when we go to unfold him, he's all one piece. So that's kind of what you're looking for there. And then now we're going to cut the head out. And see, I don't need two, so I'm just going to cut out the one side, which is a lot easier to do. have our head and our um, body we can go ahead and um, unfold the body so here's like I said the tail the neck and the horns and we're gonna open him up kind of like that and I'm gonna crease the tail right here as it curves down at the bottom and we're just gonna fold that down like that and then this is gonna be the neck and the horns. So we're going to fold the neck down like that. So it's kind of pointing down and then we want to fold the antlers, or I'm sorry, the horns um, back up. So kind of like they're facing the, the sky. Just like that. Okay. So then once you get that folded, we are going to want to uh, cut the slits for the horns to go through the head. So pick whatever side you want to use. I think I'm going to go with this side. And we're going to fold just right about at the top of this first bulge here. Whoops. And we're not actually folding it. I'm just kind of, uh, I'm, I am folding it, but I don't want to crease it too much. I'm really more so looking to make the two slits. And then I usually take a paintbrush to kind of open these up just a little bit so it's a little easier to fit those horns through. I mean, after all, it is um, flimsy cardboard, so sometimes it doesn't want to poke through on its own. And then we want to just make sure that it fits. So let's get this on here real fast and then we'll get to decorating. And you can always adjust your cuts if you need to. Or if you have extra, maybe you don't like how they uh, come up through his head, you do have that extra because we only cut out one side on that paper roll. You can always adjust there. But that's basically what we're looking for. Just like that. So you can kind of see he's already starting to take shape. Very cool. Okay. So now we are going to paint and decorate. So for this part, I always take them apart um, just because I think it's easier to do. And I'm going to cover him in this light blue. And I'm just using acrylic paint, um, nothing fancy. Uh, and you can get that at any craft store. Um, and we want to make sure that we're covering him completely. So I'm going to go ahead and start that. Um, like I said, I take it apart so I can paint his head. It just makes it a little easier. And I'm going to start here first because I want it to dry by the time we're done painting his body so I can show you how to add the, the other details. And this part might get a little messy. Um, you might get it on your fingers, but that's quite all right because acrylic paint with a little soap and water will come off pretty easily. So um, when I paint him, if you are using paints, I want to make sure that I don't paint his uh, horns here because those are going to be white. And actually, I'm going to do that real fast um, so those can also dry. But there's not really a, uh, a specific place you have to start. But I am going to paint these real quick so they are on the more dry side when I go to uh, put them back through the, um, 
the head because sometimes it just because they're not completely dry and I want to be able to show you a finished product here. So I'm just painting the the horns here. The, yeah, horns. I keep calling them antlers and I don't know why. <laughs> Get that done. So when you're when you're coloring your dinosaur, uh he doesn't or she doesn't have to be one solid color. You can always make him or her multicolor. Um, I think adding like some colorful spots or um, scales to them would be kind of cool. So you can always do that. Okay, so just set that to the side for now. I'm going to continue to paint his body. And I really love this little turquoisey teal kind of color that I've got. Yeah, we want to cover all of him. Just not the antlers. I think I might go back over that with a little bit more white so I can see the pen through it. There we go. Well, I like uh, having a paper towel down when I do stuff like this. Just kind of contains the mess, even though it will wipe off my countertops. I want to try to, you know, keep that as clean as possible. So it's always a helpful little thing to have. And I'm going to also paint the inside of him too, so he's going to be blue all the way around. Almost there. Okay, and then just the tail and his head. And you're not going to really see this part of it, but I like to just cover on the bases. Okay, and then the bottom. Perfect. Like I said, we are creating a Triceratops today, which if anybody has seen Land Before Time, which I know I referenced this in the video on Monday, but um, this is Sarah on Land Before Time, so um, only she's blue now and not yellow. But, all right, so now that that's done, set that to the side, and I'm just gonna rinse off my hands. All right. So before we add the extra detail to her body, I'm going to let her dry a little bit. And we're going to move to the face. So here we're going to add the, her, um, the horn on her nose, uh, the eyes, and then some detail around the top of her. So I'm going to start with her eyes. And we want them to kind of land at the very bottom of this bulge. And just two black dots. And if you have paint, you can always use paint as well. It doesn't have to be a marker. I just find it's a little easier to dot. 
I'm gonna keep them a little small to start with because I can always make them bigger if I want. And then we're gonna come in with a little white here and do the nose. So um, we wanna do a small triangle. That. I'm gonna bring this a little closer here in just a second so you can see it. Um, but that's kind of what you're looking for. I'm gonna go back over this just a little bit more so it's a little bit brighter. And then we're gonna go around the top of her um, head here with some white to add some detail. And it's just dotting around the very edge of the her head. I like that. That's what you're looking for. So, uh, and like I said, you don't have to use these colors. You can do whatever color that uh, you would like. But uh, I like to add white accents. I think it makes it pop. But it would be really cool to do it in another color. Like if you wanted to do a darker blue or something. So we'll let her head dry here, and her body's still a little wet, but I feel like we can add the toes. That's still a little wet there. And we're gonna go through and add uh, three little white dots to the bottom of her feet. So she's got some toes, just like that. This pen is really just wanting to show through today. And same thing, oops, same thing here. And we want that to be done on all of her, all of her feet. Just like that, and one more. And so you can add some detail to her tail too, which I think I might do real fast. Um, just add some of these white pieces to her side, side of her tail. And then I think they have them down the middle too. But it doesn't have to be anatomically correct. I didn't do this on my other one, but I kind of like the little spikes on her tail. It's kind of cool looking. Just like that. Okay, so I'm gonna let that dry just a little bit. Hopefully her antlers here are getting dry. Let's see if her head is dry here for the most part. So we are going to, I'm gonna blow on this just a little to make sure those uh, horns are dry. Again, sorry I keep calling them antlers, I don't know why. But then we are going to work this back through. And this gets a little tricky here. There we go, got the one, got the other one, cool, okay, that wasn't too bad. And then once you get them through, kind of fold them out so they stay a little bit better. Straighten them a little bit there. Very cool. And that is what you're looking for. And you can always rebend the the tail and the neck if you think that it needs to, if it's pointing up or down too much, just like that. But that's what you're looking for. Isn't that neat? Never would have thought that that would have been able to be uh, created out of a toilet paper roll. And then I've got one here that I did earlier as a, uh, as a sample. And then hopefully you tuned in on Monday 
um, cause we made this little guy. So now we have kind of like a little herd of dinosaurs happening it, and I am absolutely loving it. So maybe you can create kind of like a scene for them to play in or sit in. So, but awesome. That's, that's really it. Um, hopefully you guys enjoyed this video. Um, like I said, the Triceratops was my favorite. So let us know what your favorite was. Um, and please share uh, any of your creations with us on Facebook. We always love to see those um, kind of come to life. So um, hope you all are staying well. And thanks again for tuning in.